I'm Viv. I'm talking about open education today, so I thought, where else? But out in the open, this is Sheepwood. Welcome to Sheepwood, which is behind my house in Bristol. If you can hear scampering around that spike, he's coming to help. Um, I hope he doesn't stop barking. But um, talking about open education, uh, a few years ago, I did a MOOC. I did a uh, Berkeley College jazz MOOC. It was absolutely fantastic. It was by Vibes player Gary Burton, and it was brilliant. And we all recording bits of improvisation, putting them on SoundCloud and um, commenting on each other's stuff and it was great. And I got to the end of the six weeks and then I'd failed it. I thought, what on earth? It didn't matter that I'd failed. I'd had such a great time and I, I can still hear the influences of that in my playing. But it kind of made me think, wow, what kind of experiences are we giving people online these days? You know, I'd suddenly not been able to navigate all the buttons and in fact what had happened is I'd not done half the assessments and there was no one to pick that up. There was no one to talk to afterwards. And it really started making me think about, you know, how, what is this new experience that, that people are having online? Um, you know, as having those sort of conversations with myself and, and, and thinking about that. Um, I've, I loved some of these videos and what Audrey was saying the other day about education and the fact, it, it's about failure, isn't it? It's about us learning by mistakes and creating a safe environment for students to make their mistakes and Ulrich was talking about the need to make sort of visual and social connections and that's really difficult online and I'm not sure we're getting that right yet and Nishant when he was talking about openness he was so passionate it was clearly something that sort of bubbled through his his blood system and his veins was this, this need to be open and to share and it, it made me think that all these people are talking about the ethics of education um, and it's, it's been quite an interest of mine. Um, I've completed a review and done some interviews with people um, and this whole... I think we live in amazing times, don't we? We've got this incredible technology potential. We've got the use of, of internet connections and social networking that we've never had before. Um, so you've got this technology scooting off in, into the distance and then popping out of all all the MOOCs and the connected MOOCs and the platform MOOCs are these new pedagogies and new ways of doing stuff and some of that's coming back into the classroom now but I think what's happened it's outpaced our ethical thinking we need to recalibrate what we think is an ethical open learning experience now and that's what we need to do um, and in one of the reviews that I've recently done I've kind of I kind of paired it back to where I thought education has stemmed from and there was um, a fantastic book by Peters, I haven't got it. Um, you can buy it for a penny off Amazon, it's called The Ethics of Education, I think everyone in education should read it. Um, it's a real good solid foundation of, of actually, and it puts into really clear words of why we're doing this, you know, as educators, what, what, what really motivates us. And he talks about the manner of education, so how it's delivered and those relationships and those those facilitator teacher student relationships but also the 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 matter of it so he talks about the ethical nature of content and the appropriateness of content and the quality of the content and I thought that's a really good framework to, to then apply to open education um, and then pulling out the, the different dimensions that emerged it was really clear that people are concerned about the quality of education so how do you assure the quality of not just MOOCs but open content? Um, how do you assure that you know the quality of, of quizzes and assessments are well just working at all? You know, I think we've all gone on to a MOOC and just done the quizzes at the end and, and then then subsequently pass because the questions are rubbish. So how do we assure that and how do we make sure, you know, if it's peer and open assessment and learning that people simply aren't cheating, you know, it's huge temptation to do that um, and when we think about the quality of of the matter it's 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 not just getting it precise and right it's well is it is it culturally rich you know or is what we're presenting sort of a westernized view of, of what knowledge is and I, I think that very much goes on so how can we make this flexible and adaptable in different contexts um, not to exclude people so when we think about education ethics, we need to think about quality. Um, I think the whole thing about privacy and online learning and whether it's a safe space, uh, I, th I, think, I think that 
horses bolted from the stable and I think it's going to be awfully difficult to, to rein that back in and think about what about the, the data and the mass data that's been taken and sold on and I think anyone that's signed up for MOOC now you will have had years and years of, of, of emails trying to sell you products and stuff I mean, it's just the principles of online marketing isn't it um, but we've not thought about that and I, I think I think I think that's a serious ethical issue and the intellectual property um, you know who owns the content that they're producing because those, those sets of principles and values might be different to what a student expects in their university setting where we, we own our content and then perhaps we put it out on a MOOC platform um, and that's that's a fuzzy area um, and so I, th I think there's a lot around sort of data privacy intellectual property and literacies of being able to be involved you know people people yeah clearly are successful in, in MOOCs and online learning but the massive numbers have dropped out we don't know why people drop out and I feel really bad are they getting a bad taste of education if, if I have a student that drops out of a course I'm immensely worried about them and, and I, you know they might have good reasons but I, I want to know those reasons and are we turning people off education through some you know quite mediocre experiences perhaps I don't think that's very good I think we need to be more responsible and I, I think what's interesting with open learning maybe more so with the connectedist MOOC type model is this totally different relationship with the between the teacher and the, the learner so Peters in his traditional 1970s book will say the teacher is sort of this fountain of knowledge and there's this sort of power difference between the, the teacher and the pupil and MOOCs just and, and open learning blows that apart doesn't it and, and at the best of them we're co-creating we're sharing and you don't have that power power barrier um, but in fact I also see that it, it kind of goes the other way when I think of something like DS106 and there's, there's me hanging out online with these amazingly digitally creative students who are all trying to create art and video and stuff and I'm thinking wow you know I, th I think that the power in some ways can shift that way but I think we need to think about these relationships and Ulrich was right you know that you know how do we connect online and ensure a fair and honest and open relationship and that people have a good experience I think that's that's another good one I think when I've ploughed through all the literature, what's quite clear as well is there's, there's no ethical guidance for researchers anymore. And, and even when you look at some of the, um, sort of the, the governing bodies that, that, that provide sort of us with, with the, um, the ethical frameworks, they, they're confused. They don't know if MOOCs are public or private spaces. So is it a free-for-all or is it not a free-for-all? Um, you know, we can all come across examples of people now doing this research using you know students thoughts and opinions and sound bites and it's not even ethically approved by their institution so I think talking a lot about the learning and the teaching but I think we need to recalibrate the ethics behind the research also um, in, in in Audrey's presentation she was she was saying that and you know we, we need to start thinking but I think the dilemma is well who's doing this thinking now I mean, especially when you think about commercial organisations and commercial MOOC advisors nibbling the heels of our education system. Well, they're certainly not going to be bothered, are they? I've worked in industry, you know, your, your ethical boundary, if you like, is set at a different place. Um, but we need to really take a stance as educators, otherwise they're, they're just, they're just going to sort of run all over us. Um, so we need to have a think about what we're doing, and I think it's very much up to vice chancellors and institutional leaders as well to really take a stance um, and I think there was a story about the group of Harvard professors that took it into their own hands and they, they, they had these conversations so I think every institution needs to have these conversations I think it's, it's really important um, there was one other really nice paper by Philip Bray in 2006 I'm just reading the title here the social and ethical dimensions of computer based learning um, and that's got some fantastic thoughts in it and he says you know we need to translate our campus values online it's really hard to do but we need to think about that when we're setting up every single course um, because it's very easy to slip into the unethical so I think these are 
just such exciting times to be in in education we've we've got the power of the internet at our hands we've got the power of making amazing connections and relationships at our hands but i think we need to take a step back now and recalibrate what, what we think is the right approach um, and I, I think this applies this will increasingly apply to the notion of research data and the need to publish data now open access you know everything is in this big melting pot it's not just about learning and education and I think that could give it a big boost um, and I think as a researcher what's I still go back to you know the experience I had and how I worry about the people that, that drop out and I think what's important especially for researchers is to try and talk to those people at the edges those ones that maybe aren't having a great experience they can't sort their technology out they haven't got the digital means to participate and I think that's where the research needs to focus not on the usually highly motivated volunteers that will always volunteer to do a survey or something and it's it, that's a difficult thing for a researcher I think only then when we sort of nibble away at the boundaries is we'll start to really get an understanding of what does make a very sort of sociable and equitable learning experience so enjoy open ed week <laughs>